Hello. Uh, in the introductory lesson, we learned how to introduce sprite and set it to some basic motions. We also seen that as soon as the sprite reaches the edge of the canvas, it essentially gets stuck there. So we need to figure out uh, how to handle this collision. If any of this uh, looks unfamiliar, it's probably a good idea to take a peek at that intro lesson first and then come back to it. Uh, one of the ways that we can handle this collision has been shown before, and this is the way that we can make the sprite sort of disappear at the colliding edge and then reappear on the opposite side, or anywhere else for that matter. Here, <clears throat> we're going to show another way to handle this collision, and this is by making the sprite bounce off the colliding edge. First, we're going to show how it can be set to bounce at some random angle. To do that, first we need to detect when the sprite collided with the edge, so we need to find the event handler for the sprite, right? one that the edge is reached right here. The next thing is we need to figure out which edge is reached. For that, the edges are indexed, the top one is 1, bottom is minus 1, the right is 3, and the left one is minus 3. So we need to check that, we need to go to controls. We can pick uh, if, else if, because we need to be, do these checks a couple of times. So what we need to do is to check this index and compare it to a number that we know would define it, right? So we need to get the edge here and compare that edge. Let's say we want to compare first whether it reached the top, right? So for the top, we need to compare the index with 1. And if it is 1, what do we want to do? If it's 1, we want it to bounce randomly, but what are the possible angles of the top, right? So remember, 0 is straight to the right, and then counterclockwise is positive, so this would be 90, 180, 270, back to 360 degrees, or we can go clockwise, but then it's a negative, so it would be minus 90, minus 180, and so on. So, we want to set or change the heading of this sprite. So we want to go here and we have to pick the set sprites heading right here. And we want to set this heading to a random number. So we go to math, we find a random integer right here. And in this case, the angle can go from 180 to 360 right here. So we resolve the top one. So if it's not the top, then we need to repeat this check. So let's do this check again here, right? So else if we now want to check, are we at the bottom? So that would be minus one. If we're at the bottom, we can now change the heading again. The only difference is that now, at the bottom, what are the angles? The angles, possible angles, are from 0 to 180 degrees, right? So we change this random number from 0 to 180. And if it's not top or bottom, we have two more options. So we need to do one more check. We need one more else if. So if you remember, we go to the settings here. We add one more else if right here and then we can do this check again so let's do this check and this time let's say we check if we reach the right edge so that would be three what is different is that the heading now can resume both angles off of the right edge and go from 90 to 270 degrees so this would go from 90 to 270 right here and if it's not the right one, now we're out of options. It has to be the left one. So we don't need to check anything. We just need to execute the last option here. We need to change the setting off of the left edge. And off of the left edge, let's say it can go from minus 90 to plus 90. So we're going to label to introduce some negative angle as well. Okay. And this really resolves everything that we wanted to do. The only thing here is that this would be bouncing off forever, 
in principle. So let's put some uh, end to this motion. To do that, we're going to need to introduce a counter, right? So let's introduce some global variable, which is going to be our counter. Now let's call it a counter. We can call it whichever way we want. And uh, let's set counter initially to zero right here. And then every time the edge is reached, we want to basically add increment this counter, right? So we're going to do essentially set the counter to increment it by one. Let's go here, pick addition. We need the current counter, so get counter plus one right here. Right. And then once we go through this bouncing, we need to check uh, has this uh, counter reached the number that we wanted to stop, right? So we're going to need to do another if control to check what is the status of our counter. And uh, we can pick like whatever. If, uh, say, we want to compare whether this counter reached say 10 bounces so we're gonna get the counter here and see whether we had 10 bounces for instance if we had 10 bounces we wanted to stop right so what we're gonna do we're gonna set the speed of the image or, or the sprite to zero then we can also reorient it at zero as well, which means pointing straight to the right. So let's say we set the speed to zero and then we set the heading as well to zero. And let's say we wanna center it on the canvas in that case. So we need to set the coordinate of our sprite in x and y right so we're gonna set the x coordinate to what we need to set it if we want to center it to half the canvas width right so we need to half so let's see where is our division right here and we need the canvas right here to get the canvas height or width in this case. So width for X, and then we need half of that right here. Okay. And we're gonna need this for Y as well. So let's prepare it right here. So set the, oops. Oh yeah, we can do it like that. And then just change Y, and then we want a half of the height right here. So this is this one, and uh, one more little thing is we want to reset the counter at the end. Because if we want to repeat this, we need to, once we stop, we need to reset the counter as well. And this is right here. Okay, almost done. This is going to execute our motion. It's going to bounce 10 times. We just need to give it this initial kick for the sprite to start moving. Right? For that, we can say we can swipe or, or and, uh, fling our uh, sprite. So if we do that, we can say we need the event handler when it's flung right here. Okay. So what do we want to do? We want to set the heading when it's flung, right? So set heading two. What do we want to set the heading to whatever direction we actually flung it? So we're going to get heading right here. Need a little bit more space. OK, this is good. And we will set some speed, so whatever we want to do. Let's say we set uh, 
image or the sprite speed uh, to something that's not too fast or too slow. So let's set 10. Okay. And this is it right now. Let's try and see if it works as advertised. Uh, give it a start motion, right? And then it will be bouncing off of the edge in a random fashion, right? So every time it bounces, it's going to assume some random angle. And it's going to keep doing this until it bounces 10 times, upon which it's going to be centered right here. So which is about to happen. Okay, so this is it. Now, one more quick thing. We obviously don't have to bounce randomly. Physical bounce would basically do the bouncing off of the surface under the same angle that is equal to the incoming angle relative to the normal to the surface. Luckily, this is always like a pre-built procedure. And we can actually do that without uh, programming it by ourselves. So we're going to show quickly how to do that. We can remove this whole thing right now here. And we can call for the image bounce, right? So if we find here call image bounce right here, the only difference, we don't want to preset the direction of the bounce but we want to bounce off of the edge that it's colliding with. So we're gonna get this edge right here. And this would do the bouncing for us. And uh, we can also retain our little global variable. And let's move this out of the way. So, now what's gonna happen, everything's the same. The only difference is that the bouncing would be real physical bouncing off of the edge. And you'll see that the bounce is, bouncing angle is equal to the incoming angle to the surface in this case. So let's demonstrate this real quickly. It goes like this. And every time it bounces now, it's gonna bounce under the same angle that it arrives uh, during the collision with the surface. And once it does this 10 times again, it is going to stop and center itself. And this uh, pretty much concludes uh, this current lesson on setting the sprite uh, to bounce. There's one more lesson, but uh, until then, uh, goodbye.